Good morning and welcome to the virtual worship service of the Unitarian Universalist Meeting House of Provincetown. My name is Reverend Kate Wilkinson and I'm so glad that you have joined us today. Today our worship service is a celebration of music during this pandemic time. Singers and musicians, including our own choir, have had to get really creative in order to make music together during this pandemic, but they have never stopped. Bertolt Brecht, a German poet who lived in exile during the Nazi occupation of World War II, once wrote, in the dark times, will there also be singing? Yes there will also be singing about the dark times. In March of this year, musician Linda Hirshhorn was inspired by those words to create a beautiful song called In These Hard Times. That song is our anthem this morning. And we also have some other amazing music for you. Yes there will always be singing. And that is what we celebrate today. As I light my chalice here at the UU Meeting House of Provincetown, I invite you to light a candle wherever you are. In that way, we can feel connected even while we are apart. Good morning, friends. This is Lynn lighting a candle in Oxford, Ohio. These are our chalice lighting words from Doug Hammersholt. Each morning, we must hold out the chalice of our being to receive, to carry, to give back. flows on in endless song above earth's lamentation. I hear the real though far off hymn that hails a new creation. Now, through all the tumult and the strife, I hear the music ringing. It sounds an echo in my soul. How can I keep from singing? What though the tempest round me roars, I know the truth it liveth. What though the darkness round me close, songs in the night it giveth. No storm can shake my inmost calm, while to that rock I'm clinging, since love prevails in heaven and earth. How can I keep from singing? When tyrants tremble as they hear the bells of freedom ringing, when friends rejoice both far and near, how can I keep from singing? To prison cell and dungeon vile, our thoughts to them are winging. 
when friends by shame are undefiled, how can I keep from singing? In these hard times, there will always be singing, always be singing in these hard times, in these hard times, there will always be singing, always be singing in these hard times. In these hard times, there will always be singing, always be singing in these hard times. In these hard times, there will always be singing. Always be singing in these hard times. In these hard times, they will always be singing. Always be singing in these hard times. In these hard times, they will always be singing. Always be singing in these hard times. In March, as the coronavirus became a reality for us here in the United States, we began to mourn many things. We mourned the deaths of loved ones and strangers. We mourned the disappointments of canceled trips and events. We mourned not being able to go to work and school and our houses of worship. We mourned not being able to gather with family and with our friends. And the musicians among us mourned another loss, not being able to sing together. The reality of this hit home when, after a choir practice in Mount Vernon, Washington, 52 people were infected with the coronavirus from one asymptomatic singer. Two people died. Singing together, the thing that has brought us joy, solace, hope, was now dangerous. It seems cruel that during this most challenging time, one of our deepest resources for healing and resilience, music, would become the risk. Yet at the same time, a new truth emerged alongside the first. In these hard times, there will always be singing. Homebound Italians sang harmonies from their balconies. A British family changed all the words to a song from Les Mis 
into lyrics about quarantine in a YouTube video that went viral. Local musicians began live streaming concerts from their living rooms. And church choirs like ours hardly missed a beat before delving into the complicated new world of creating online virtual choruses. I'm not sure you know how much work goes into preparing three minutes of music for our online worship services. First, Mary selects a song that goes with my worship theme for the week. She has to pick something that is in the public domain copyright-wise or that we have the rights to use. It also has to be something familiar to the choir. Then Brenda goes into the meeting house to record the accompaniment, which she sends to Mary. Mary then records her own voice on top of the accompaniment and sends that track, along with sheet music, lyrics, and musical notes, to our choir members. They then each use two separate devices, along with a pair of headphones, to simultaneously listen to the recorded track on one device while recording their own voice on the second device all while reading music, looking at the camera, and smiling. With no other voices to listen to or blend with, it's like singing into a void. It takes many, many takes to get it right. Sometimes the phone rings, the dog barks, the music flies off of the music stand with a breeze. Time to start over. Take 25. Then comes the complicated process of sending a large file via email, Dropbox, the cloud. The recipient is Paul Cezanne at his home in New Hampshire. He has the overwhelming task of lining up each individual video so that each person starts at exactly the same moment. He has to adjust the volume and blend the various sound qualities of each device and also arrange the videos on a screen using a specialized app on his computer. It takes many, many hours. He does all of this as a volunteer. Then Paul sends the video to me. All of this is done by Wednesday so that I can figure out where and how the song best fits into the other service elements. Sometimes the file is too large and we go back and forth tweaking the format. By the time you are watching and listening to their hard work on Sunday morning, Mary, Brenda, and the choir have already submitted their parts for the next piece of music. This week's beautiful piece was led by Stan and Ada. At the height of the song, Paul was working with 17 different vocal tracks. Yes, there will always be singing. Always be singing in these hard times. All across the world, Small and large choirs are doing the same thing because how can they keep from singing? I cannot fathom the amount of work that is collectively involved in making music in this new way. I had just a taste of it this week when contributing my own video to our opening song. I am so grateful to Mary, to Brenda, to Paul, to our choir, to Brenda's family and to my mom, and to all of the guest musicians who have graced us with their musical gifts during this time. Worship would just not touch our souls in the same way without music. There is something timeless, something biological, something magical about the way music moves us, connects us, 
uplifts us. It is such a gift. Deep in our bones, music is part of the human experience, especially music that is born out of adversity and hardship. Whether we are singing in the shower or finding a way to join our voices with others even while we are apart, in these hard times, there will always be singing. And I am so grateful for that. Grateful too for the creativity of people who are mourning the loss of group singing and finding a way to create virtual choirs that connect us far beyond what we thought was imaginable. The other day, someone at Coffee Hour told us about a virtual choir created by composer and conductor Eric Whitaker. His latest project included singers from 129 different countries. My college friend Cheryl was one of them, and she was joined by 17,571 other voices. Paul, aren't you glad you didn't have to synchronize those tracks? A labor of love indeed. Let's listen.
Eric Whitaker wrote that song for these hard times. May we sing together always. May our voice be soft. May our singing be music for others. And may it keep others aloft. Sing gently always. Sing gently as one. May we stand together always. May our voice be strong. May we hear the singing always. And may we always sing along. Sing gently always. Sing gently as one. For musicians, Singing is what gives meaning to life. Music is what gets them up in the morning. The songs are what gives them, gives us hope. What though the tempest round me roars, I know the truth, it liveth. What though the darkness round me close, songs in the night it giveth. No storm can shake my inmost calm while to that rock I'm clinging since love prevails in heaven and earth. How can I keep from singing? The first known publication of those words was in 1868 in the New York Observer. Titled Always Rejoicing, it was attributed to Pauline T. We don't know who that is, but we do know that a year later in 1869, Baptist minister Robert Wadsworth Lowry put those words to music to create the hymn that we know today. That means that the words to this song came to be during the 1860s the time of the Civil War, a desperately bleak time in our country's history. Later, in the 1950s, a woman named Doris Plenn penned a third verse to the song as a response to the McCarthyism that was sweeping the country. Another hard time. She then taught the song to her friend, Pete Seeger, who included her lyrics when he sang and republished the hymn as a folk song. Friends, we are living in hard times. The tempest of this pandemic and this political climate is roaring around us. And this storm this storm is doing its best to shake our inmost calm. May we cling to the rock of music. May we be grateful for all those who share songs in the night. In these hard times, may love prevail. May love prevail. May love prevail. May love prevail. My life flows on in endless song. How can I keep from singing? Amen. And blessed be.
storm can shake my inmost heart, while to that rock I'm clinging, since love prevails in heaven. Yeah.